is uh, for it is uh, the process of uh, visa liberalization for Kosovo. So uh, to, uh, yesterday we saw one statement uh, uh, from Germany and France that we say that Kosovo should get uh, the visa liberalization. But uh, we have seen in, in years uh, one statement of France that they wasn't uh, ready to, get, to give Kosovo uh, the freedom of movement in Europe. But uh, what is your comment uh, for this? I'm afraid, unfortunately, that will take some time still. Okay. Because, you know, the Weimar Triangle, that was the context of this meeting of the Polish and German and French um, foreign ministers. They have made a long statement about many of the key issues uh, about the war in Ukraine, about uh, institutional reform, about the Western Balkans. And also they have made a commitment for visa liberalization of Kosovo. And, but ultimately it is uh, still blocked by the same people and the same personalities and the same countries which have made this statement. So they have said, yes, we should do Kosovo visa liberalization and make progress too. But they have not said a clear yes towards visa liberalization. And I'm afraid that the blackmail against Kosovo is going to continue. So you are not optimistic that the visa, visa, visa liberalization for Kosovo will get uh, done soon? I'm hoping and I call for clear action in that direction. I call for the French government and the German government and the Dutch government to also make a clear yes um, and uh, liberalize um, uh, also the visa access to Schengen for Kosovo. I call for NATO membership. I call um, here actually I'm quite optimistic. I think it's possible to have partnership for peace of Kosovo, which would be a big step. I call for Council of Europe membership. And I always uh, make uh, the case again that for the recognition by Spain, by Slovakia, by Romania, by Greece, that is actually a possibility that Greece will recognize. And also by Cyprus, uh, that would be very, very important. And by Ukraine, most of all. So all these countries and by Bosnia, I made this case already a, a lot of times. All this is very important and it has to happen. And there is no reason why this is not happening because Kosovo has fulfilled all the requirements uh, that we asked for. But unfortunately, the French duplicity that means this incredible Mr. Macron, who is saying on the one side he's in favor, but on the next side, when it's about voting, he is blocking it. And that is the problem. And also in the German government, I'm very deeply disappointed by talking nicely in the face of the Kosovo representative, but in the reality, when it comes to the vote in the European institutions, they are not performing. Because if the German chancellor would really want visa liberalization for Kosovo, which on the bigger item issues of Europe is a very small issue for Europe. Yeah? It's of course very important for the Kosovo citizens, but it's a very small issue when it comes to war and peace in Europe and Ukraine. He could certainly simply ask the French president to get this done and it would be no problem for anybody and it would be easy to be done. But uh, this kind of uh, yes, nice in the face, and in reality, not uh, voting on it positively is very disappointing. And I understand everybody who is very disappointed by the European institutions. Yeah, but Mr. Gunther, so, uh, but we have seen the statement of France that uh, time by time they support the Kosovo in a different ways, but when the case is in visa liberalization. You have to speak no. a bit louder, so, please. Okay, so uh, France, the France is going to uh, to support the visa liberalization for Kosovo, but in in past years we have seen that uh, the, this state uh, support Kosovo uh, Kosovo in uh, all the ways, but not uh, in the visa liberalization. So uh, why do you think that France is uh, is uh, uh, doing this policy? So is this uh, the, the war in Ukraine or the stability of the Western Balkan countries or what? No, it's about uh, French policy towards Serbia and Russia. 
because now recently, for example, the United Kingdom has made the policy to train the Ukrainian soldiers and officers. They have actually thousands of Ukrainians now currently under training from the army and training in the United Kingdom, and they are a real ally. And the French foreign minister, or I think it was the defense minister when asked, uh, now this week it was, he said, you know, we have chosen a different way because the president wants to remain the balancing power uh, in Europe. Balancing power, he means he wants to be the good guy in the eyes of uh, Putin and in the eyes of President Vucic in Serbia. So the French policy for many, many decades now ultimately is uh, not very helpful on the Balkans and also when it comes to this major global and uh, dramatic confrontation which we have with Russia at the moment. So the okay. truth is the French are not fully allies and uh, they are basically uh, in backing up their position and trying to evade responsibility and they always want to be the good uh, guys in the eyes of the Serbs and of the Russians as well, the ones you can really talk to, uh, even after we have genocide committed in, so we have seen it they co by, committed by the, by the Russians now in Izum again, uh, dramatically, and also in Bucha and uh, Mariupol and all the places. Still, uh, the French want to talk nicer to uh, the uh, Russians, and that's very regrettable. And visa is just one of the, visa for Kosovo is just one of the many issues which is around where basically President Macron represents uh, Serbia on the European level. And that is the fact. He has direct links uh, with uh, Vucic. He has visited, um, you might remember for this dramatic visit for 100 years of the end of the First World War. And he is consistently and continuously representing the Serbian interest on the European level. And uh, the visa, issue is basically just a way to blackmail the Kosovo leadership because it's very popular issue obviously it's about the freedom to travel for the people of Kosovo and it's a very popular issue and then he uses that to basically force um, Albin Kurti and the government into staying in the dialogue because the dialogue with Serbia is absolutely useless. You might have seen that recently and now last week or two, three days ago, uh, President Vucic has made it adamantly clear that he will never under no uh, circumstances recognize Kosovo. And he is the power authority of the country of Serbia. So the idea that the dialogue will end with some kind of recognition or some kind of uh, peace agreement yeah, is absolutely delusionary. <laughs> it will never, never happen. So the only way, the real way what um, Prime Minister Kurti and the Kosovo institutions have to do is uh, to stop the dialogue and uh, to focus exclusively on NATO membership and on EU membership and not on via Belgrade because that gives them a kind of veto but directly on lobbying the European institutions and fulfilling everything which is required and leave the dialogue behind it. But of course, doing that would threaten this kind of carrot of visa liberalization. And that's why basically Mr. Macron is feeding always this idea of a possible visa liberalization in front of Mr. Kurti and the Kosovo public, just to keep him committed to continue this kind of useless dialogue. This is the factor. And this is why they make some statements. In reality, uh, neither visa liberalization nor any progress in the dialogue will come. And that's a big tragedy, but what to do about it is quite logically, simply even be more pro-European than everybody else expects, reform Kosovo so beautifully that it is irresistible for Europe and put the blame directly on this duplicity of Mr. Macron and his pro-Serbian policy. Mr. Gomper, thank you for your time and interview. I don't have any more questions. Uh, so, it's a pleasure to, to talk to you for these uh, topics about Kosovo position in Europe and dialogue and visualization with hopefully France and Germany government will support Kosovo in this, uh, how to say, organic uh, process to move uh, forward and to, to be part of EU institution and stuff. So thank you again for your time and we'll keep in touch. Maybe we'll do more interviews.
Absolutely. Always welcome. Thanks a lot. Best regards from Vienna. Bye. Bye.